What's going on guys, William. When you're a real estate investor, you need to have good insurance. Whether you're flipping or you're a buy and hold guy such as myself, I wanna show you a couple tips and tricks, not only to find you a better rate, but to save you time as well. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the smack fest, the beat down. The SWAT team is here on another beautiful day of shutting the week down. And if we're just meeting, my name is William Doria. I live solely off of passive income. I invest for buy and hold rental properties. My portfolio is single family, multifamily, and commercial units. So we're gonna do a quick dive today in on exactly how to shop insurance and how to find the best rates and how to cover your butt in the case of a claim. Over the last two years alone, I've had a roof hail damage, which was $6,000 to replace. I had another roof hail damage on a commercial property, which was about $28,000 to replace. And I had a leak under a pier and beam house that actually the water had saturated the real wood floors, real hardwood floors, and then buckled them, right? And that was an $11,000 insurance claim. So in the past two years, I have used my insurance company over and over and over again, and they do pay out, and the ones that give me a hard time, I get rid of. But today, we're gonna talk about how to start off with the right company the first time so you don't have to reshop them and you don't have to fight for your money. So, the first tip is to call and get a hold of a insurance broker. Now, an insurance broker, what they'll do on your behalf is they'll say, what are you looking for, Mr. Smith? And you can say something like, I'm interested in $500,000 liability. My house is worth $140,000. I would like a 1% deductible on claims such as fire, wind, hail, and I would also like to get an additional $2 million umbrella policy. Now, if you're new to this, I might have just spit out a lot more of a mouthful than you could comprehend. And I get it, guys. I was the same way when I started. But basically, you're going to them, you're laying out what you're interested in, such as that's a common criteria from a lot of real estate investors, and letting them do all the legwork because my insurance broker that I'm working with right now calls in shops for me 25 separate companies on my behalf. Now, you have to ask yourself, how long would it take for you to call 25 companies to give them all that information, wait for them to get back with you? Like, it would be a nightmare. And if you could do it in a week, that was a pretty busy week. So you give all this to the insurance broker. They make, for instance, an 11% commission, which does not inflate your premium. So you're paying the same, let's say $1,000 a year, and the insurance company will give the broker a cut for them bringing you as a customer. So all this is to your benefit. Now, if you have a multifamily, you would just type in commercial insurance broker. And if you're residential and you're just looking for a single family rental property or a flip property, for instance, you would just type in insurance broker. And this is important, this is very important. When you call and you're telling them what kind of coverage you want, you want to be sure that you're telling them you want a landlord's policy, okay? Because that is going to affect everything and you wanna start off by saying landlord's policy right off the bat. And this is if you're a buy and hold. If you're a flipper, it's gonna, it may be a little bit different. Ask the broker and tell them, hey, this is what I'm doing. What kind of insurance do I need? and maybe scale it up a little bit from there. I'm always a big fan of, of taking the minimums and then bringing them up a little bit just in case and also getting the umbrella policy that covers everything. It's super cheap and it'll pay out in the event of worst case scenario. No kidding, I had a plumber out about six months ago that was under one of my pier and beam houses and he pulled up one of those little doors, you know, to get it underneath the house and he fixed the pipe and all that good stuff and then he left. Well, the problem was is the little door that he pulled up in this little girl's closet, he didn't put that back. So when the little girl opened up the door and stepped into the closet to grab some clothes, she fell down in the hole and got stuck with a nail down there that was sticking out of one of the piers. So that's the kind of stuff that could turn out to be a really, really bad thing if she were to get like seriously injured, for instance. Now, of course, it could definitely fall on the plumber, but you need to have your butt covered because stuff happens that's not always your fault, but you still get the finger pointed to you 
if you get my drift. Another example is I had a family member unfortunately have a really, really bad car accident, right? And several people did not make it. And they came after, that family came after the insurance policy completely wiped it out. And instead of coming directly after that family member, that family member had a huge umbrella policy. They ended up going through the umbrella policy, cleaning every penny of it out, and then not actually touching my family member's assets. So it is not only incredibly important nowadays, but it's highly recommended because society today is very, you know, get a wreck, get a check kind of society. And you don't want to fall victim to a claim and be underinsured. And you can never get insurance after the fact. So go in, get covered, spend the extra couple bucks, get the extra coverage. You'll sleep better if anything, and it's a tax write-off. Guys, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing below. I make several videos per week on real estate investing and or personal finance to help you become a better investor. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you on the next one.